I think some of you have been to our Coffee with Waypoint and friends, and some of you haven't. Just a, a really quick intro. We started this webinar series because as a vendor that works with senior living providers, we often found that we worked with other vendors and that we were working in silos. But when we implemented programs for our customers, we were working with digital marketing agencies, whoever handled the Google Analytics. And it was this um, con you know, collaboration um, and so we would bring in other vendors that would also support and work together with us to bring valuable information to the industry. This is the first time that we've actually had a provider on, which I'm really excited about, uh, Kim Kilday. Uh, she did a presentation out at Smash that I thought was really great. And um, we're also partners and um, um, it would be and, and because of life plan communities and CCRCs being so unique, I thought it would be a great topic. So welcome, Kim. Um, and so we are going, I'm going to just quickly uh, do a real quick introduction to myself. So I've been in senior living since 2007. I've been in sales my entire career uh, until I started Waypoint back in 2017. So a sales professional, um, mostly just, just a put it into perspective is I've always been on the technology side of senior living. So bringing innovative technologies into senior living, whether it was SingFit, I'm not sure if you're familiar with them or Care Merge or Connected Living. But in 2017, I started my own company. Um, a little bit about me professionally, uh, personally, is I love to sail. Uh, we're racers and cruisers. We have a, a sailboat, which I have here on the slide. Um, and we live in the Connecticut, really uh, sail in the New England area. We live in Connecticut. The business is based in Connecticut. But anyways, that's a little bit about me. Uh, and I'd love, Kim, if you could to introduce yourself to the group that's joined today. That would be fantastic. Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I uh, work for a company called Every Age. Um, I'm the chief marketing and communications officer there. And um, I've been in the healthcare space in the area of sales or marketing for, it feels like a hundred years. And there's <laughs> a lot of things that have changed in that, in that time period. Um, uh, I joke and say, I finally found a place where um, all my chattiness from my youth actually has turned into a paycheck. So this is a beautiful thing. Um, the the other thing uh, that from a professional standpoint is that that whole thing of things are constantly changing and so um i really like to be a student of of marketing if you will and then my fun fact is that i have a soft spot for um little animals that need a home so i do a lot of puppy fostering work much to the chagrin of my husband um, <laughs> And I do have two spoiled, rotten um, rescues. So that's a little bit about me. Oh, that's awesome that you give back. That's fantastic. Uh, you know, it's a part of the lifelong learning too, as I forgot to mention at the top of this, is that one of the reasons why we're doing this, I mean, I, as a sales professional, I've been in sales for my entire life. I know that I'm now an entrepreneur and have built technology and all that. But at the end of the day, um, if you attend one of these and you just pick up one thing, it's worth it, right? It's it, it helps uh, and helps in your daily life. So our goal is always to bring as much as we can, but hopefully each one of you will pick one thing up from it. And just for credibility purposes, so you understand where we're coming from, especially if you don't know Waypoint, uh, we basically have uh, lead capture tools built for companies that serve older adults. Um, it's more like a hub than a chatbot, and we integrate all kinds of different technologies into it. So if you use Rubrik or Site Staff or others, um, our kind of core belief is your homepage is uh, your most expensive real estate. So why would you just put one call to action um, to have somebody convert in? Give them a menu of items that makes it comfortable for them. So that's what we do. Really simply, that's where we live every day is trying to help you get more qualified leads off your website. So that's what we focus on. And I would love Kim to go ahead and introduce every age so you can also get an idea of what every age does as well. So go right ahead, Kim. Sure. So in a in a nutshell, every age is in the business of developing and managing senior living communities. Uh, we follow the Southern Conference of the United Church of Christ, 
which is where we uh, have our origins uh, over 50 years ago when we first developed uh, our CCRC in Newton, North Carolina, um, Abernathy Laurels. We have three CCRCs, seven affordable housing locations, and two PACE programs. Um, and again, mostly situated in North Carolina and Southern Virginia. And is the active adult the most recent ad? Yes, um, we are in the process of uh, opening uh, March of 2025, a uh, 55 plus senior living rental community. And uh, we identified that need in the market, uh, certainly in our portfolio, that really rounds out the things that we uh, offer to uh, folks in our communities. Good. I think the PACE programs are really interesting, especially for those folks that may not be able to afford senior living in the future, right, to have that kind of oversight and coordination of care. Uh, I think the PACE programs are, are really an interesting model for our future. So very cool. So today we're going to cover, you know, Kim and I met yesterday and we went through some of what we wanted to go through on the webinar to offer you guys some valuable information. And Kim had some amazing data that she, that is recent data uh, that she that she um, she found. And so we may you may find on this is that Kim is a bit of a data geek. And for you data geeks out there, you're going to love this one because we have a lot of data here. Um, supporting. And what we're hoping to do is have more of a dialogue, but utilize the data as a backdrop to have a key conversation around life plan community, not just life plan communities, but senior living in general, and with a focus on life, well, life plan communities and why the model is so unique. Um, and then we do really want, hope that you walk away with some tips on improving your lead generation today. Um, and then we'll also introduce you to Concierge Mary that she uses to help get more qualified leads from her website uh, but at the end of the day, this should be an open forum. Um, feel free to, it, we're not a big group today. We have 14, I think 24 registered. A lot of people have big uh, graduations and, and vacations starting now. So it's a smaller group. So we could, if you want, you could even unmute and ask a question or feel free to use chat. Peggy's going to monitor chat. So we're happy to answer any questions or please, please feel free to add uh, comments or join the conversation. Um, well, I'd love to start off with understanding whoever's on the call. Are you in sales operations, marketing, or some other department? If you guys could just put that in the chat to let us know, because that'll give Kim an idea of who the audience is and maybe how to direct some of the information that she's going to share today. So if you could share that in chat, and Peggy, if you could read it out as they come in. Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> um, Julie, sales and marketing. Lauren, marketing ops. Lucy, Sales and Marketing Director at CCRC in Milwaukee. Hey, great. Kelly, Marketing and Communications. Greg, Sales. Christy, VP Sales. Vince, Operations. Stephanie, Operations, formerly Sales. All right, awesome. Nice so job, everybody. <laughs> We have a great mix. That's awesome. Uh, for those of you that do sell uh, or in marketing of sales for a CCRC, uh, or a life plan community, do you think that this is a more complex sale? And if you do, how? If you could just put a couple of thoughts into chat, um, it'll give us an idea of where you're thinking. Because one of the reasons why we were having this is because it is such a unique model. And there are so many facets and nuances to a life plan community or CCRC. So we'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Do you find it more complex than traditional senior living? And if so, why or how? And feel free to unmute if you think it's going to take too long for you to type it out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And maybe I'll just mention, you know, when you think about how the consumer has changed so much over the past several years, yeah. um, that does lend itself to making that sale so much more complex, but it's a different kind of complex because you're, instead of talking to somebody who's never heard anything about senior living or life plan communities or nursing homes or assisted living, now they're coming armed with some information. And so that conversation is a little bit, a little bit different. Yeah, exactly. Um, that makes total sense, right? Ever since the pandemic, of course, was a big catalyst for that. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, 
you, you're speaking right to the challenge right now, right? Whereas, yes, we're all moving towards digital. However, there is a place where digital meets traditional marketing uh, for the CCRCs and life plan communities. So excellent, excellent point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's time to go old school is what I think about. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense, which drives us right here to the four P's and that. that Lucy did respond, off. by the way. Oh, she did? Great. Let's hear what she has to Lucy say. Lucy says, yes, it's a very conceptual sale. It is a big capitalized decision due to cost in a type A community. It is about fit, in quotes, fear of the unknown, giving up your home and memories. Wow. Absolutely. It's a great wrap up, right? Emotional physical, big financial considerations, big lifestyle considerations. Um, wow. That's great. Thanks, Lucy. That was great. Yeah. So, you know, when you think about where we all came from a hundred years ago, you know, we've really been emblazoned in these four P's of marketing. Everything that we did followed our uh, strategy related to product price promotion and placement and really, you know, much like any other industry, we evolved too. And we've talked, uh, mentioned about digital now, but there are so many more pieces to the four Ps. I look at this as this is old school. The digital became the new school. Mm -hmm. And now post pandemic, we're really looking at how, um, how do you blend? How do you use everything in your marketing arsenal to reach the right customer at the right time to give them the right uh, service that they are looking for, or if it's a need-based product, you know, what they actually need. Um, but I always love going back. We have to go backwards before we can go forwards. Makes total sense. Makes total <clears throat> sense. Um, and I, if I'll talk to this one a little bit. So I do a lot of value-based sales training for our customers and I've done some uh, for Senior Living Ask Day and some other um, webinar public um, conferences, I'll call them. But the new sales environment, it's worth noting is that, of course, there's been more of an online boom, especially with older adults and their families, right, doing their research online. But the bottom line is, since the pandemic, consumers know they have more choices. So you're not just competing with other communities anymore. You're competing with other services, home care, uh, staying in their home with services. Uh, consumers are definitely more educated. Uh, they can go online and learn all kinds of things. So as uh, Kim noted, is they're coming to you more educated. Um, and traditional selling, uh, the the and Kim, you referred to this earlier, is the, the feature dump, right? Mm -hmm. It's not enough anymore. Consumers expect some personalization. They expect uh, for you to understand what their needs are and to help them basically through the sales journey, but in a way that's meaningful for them. Um, and they don't want to be sold. I think prospects want to be educated so they can make better, more informed decisions. And then in general, consumers are getting it naturally, whether they use Amazon or other products, but personalization um, is super key for the, the health and success of this industry and helping consumers understand the intangibles and the tangibles of senior living. I always find that the most fascinating about the sale. I think it's one of the most complex sales on the planet because of the emotional, physical lifestyle and the financial impact, but also um, that most people that come into this don't know what it is. They know um, about it, right? But when they start investigating, it might be the first time they looked at it, or maybe they looked at it for a parent, um, but they're coming in trying to be educated, which I think is super interesting. And you know, Terry, the other yeah. piece about this too, sorry. Yeah. To, no, 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 no. Is that sales cycle, it could be a few years. You know, if you have, if you're a community that has a wait list, you've got a deposit in 2018 and now it's 2024 and they're still not ready yet, you know? Uh -huh. So that emotional intelligence piece, really understanding what brought them to the table in the first place, um, really kind of um, separates a transactional sale from a uh, relational sale. Um, and so, you know, they're coming to us as subject matter experts and, that, you know, when you talked about Amazon, you know, the other thing that we have an issue, uh, not an issue with, but we have to contend with, regardless of the age of the, the uh, prospect, is that immediate gratification. So 
Um, Amazon says I can get something delivered same day. So why can't I get that tour the same day? You know, mm -hmm. why can't I get that information same day uh, as well? Yeah, they want to self-serve at the end of the day, right? Get as much as they can uh, prior to, which we do have a slide in here that talks a little bit about how that's changed. And I wonder, yeah, we'll hit that. But uh, I, Kim, I had the pleasure of attending one of your smash outbreak sessions last year. And you talked about the silent searcher. It was the first time that I had ever heard the term silent searcher. But can you fill everyone in on what you mean by that and the impact of that? Because it's uh, it was very interesting to me. It was a, a very different spin than I had ever heard on a on a prospect. <laughs> so if you could fill us in, that would be great. Um, I will tell you, the term came from an actual personal experience, not related to senior living. So here's how the story goes. Uh, it was 10 o'clock at night. I was sitting on my uh, living room couch with a glass of wine, and I needed to find an interior designer because I was uh, just getting ready to do a refurb on my house. And I had no clue. I'm matchy matchy. I needed help. So what did I do? I opened up my laptop and I started searching. And everybody had a website. Everybody had, you know, this good, you know, good information. Um, I could go on and uh, look at reviews or whatnot. But I started to think of myself as I'm the silent searcher. Nobody knows that I'm really trolling the websites or looking for these things until I'm ready to let you know that I'm there. Yeah. So that's kind of where that silent searcher piece comes up. And, uh, you know, that silent searcher in the senior living space is it could be that person that's going to move in. It could be the adult daughter that's at her wits end. And she is sitting on the couch at 10 o'clock at night. And she's trying to figure out what to do with her demented mom or dad or or just not sure where to, to turn next. And so there's all these anonymous searches. You know, they're doing their discovery on the Internet, which most likely is not going to surprise anybody on this call, I'm sure. Um, but it's it's really uh, a critical place Um and when you think about the competition, it's how do you serve them immediately at 10 o'clock at night? And um, it's and it's challenging because we can't all work 24 seven. So we need tools, uh, online tools that can allow us to to support that. Um, and 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 when we talk about trying to figure out what makes somebody tick, that whole idea of an online survey um, kind of gives us an, a perspective on what they value and what they need in a gamification kind of way, I like to think of it, mm -hmm. um, or providing virtual tours or, you know, having a chat bot of some sort. But most importantly, because the best thing we can do is get them to tour. We know as soon as we see the whites of their eyes that we can form a relationship because that's what we've been trained to do. We've been trained to listen and trained to to understand where they're coming from and then be able to position our product. But being able to provide tools when they need it, and by tools, I'm talking about options for touring or give me a little bit of information about my pricing. So, you know, if there's not if there's not a snowball's chance that they can qualify, I would rather let them know online first and not embarrass them, you know. So it's, uh, like, um, it's like options, right? So the ability to um, give somebody enough options that make them comfortable to convert in or get the content they need or interact with your brand in a way that they're comfortable with. It's really, it sounds to me like, options of meeting consumers wherever they are in the journey, if that makes sense. Right on. Okay. That's one of my, you know how you, uh, as an individual, you think that maybe you have uh, some superpowers. Mine is always 
<laughs> boiling things down. I don't know. It's just something I do. But we this I found this slide. Kim and I were were speaking this morning about this presentation, and I found this slide, and we weren't sure where to put it, but. It, it speaks, it's one of my most favorite cartoons ever. And if you've ever been in one of my sales trainings, it is a picture's worth a thousand words. You have the sales professional, right? Bragging up a whole storm about the community and all the features and everything do we do and everything we love. It's natural. We want to do that. We want to brag. And then there's the prospective customer there sleeping away because you haven't hit on what they're interested in yet. And what's in the middle is what's relevant to them or valuable to them. So Kim, maybe you could connect this into kind of the, the whole getting to the why and then being able to present the value of senior living, whether it's through content or through the website or through the sales engagement um, and talk about that a little bit uh, from your perspective as well. Sure. So, you know, it's just like any of us, we like to talk about ourselves, you know, that we're the most interesting person when we're engaging in, in that two-way discussion. Um, and so that, that old school thought of asking open-ended questions, um, my favorite question is, you know, tell me what brought you in today. Um, and just- So simple. Yeah, letting yeah, it's not it's not rocket science. It's just old fashioned understanding what somebody might very well what's on their mind. Um, and, you know, of course, when you have a couple, there could be multiple things on their mind um, and those multiple things could be at odds with each other. It's a whole nother probably webinar uh, on that. But it's really listening to what they're saying about what brought them in, or if there are some tools that they have online that they're that's at their disposal, um, really using that information. So um, uh, making sure that the sales rep is not showing them every nook and cranny of the community when all they really want is to see the wellness center and a two bedroom unit, yeah. and they want pricing. Um, because you have to consider how long that sales cycle is, that this is most likely not gonna be the last time that you touch that person, but right. touching them the first time is, is important to, to give them what they need. Makes total sense. And just so you guys know, if you get, if anybody wants a cop, there's gonna be a lot of data in this. If you guys want a copy of this, um, we're gonna record this, but we can always send you a copy of the presentation too. So you can just let us know afterwards if you want some of this data, because some of this is um, older data, but some of it's brand new as of like this month or last month. So anyways, um, do you want to, Kim, talk a little bit about this? Um, yeah. yeah. You know, I like to, this, I, it obviously looks at online shopping, but my methodology for looking at stuff like this is that Marketing is fairly new to the healthcare space. I mean, probably like 1987, 89 is really when, you know, hospitals really started to do marketing and doctors stopped feeling like they were ambulance chasers, like uh, attorneys were viewed way back when. So this really tells us where people are at. So um, it really serves to validate. I mean, Google, whether you like it or not, Google is king. Google gets the lion's share of searches, even though you've got Bing out there. Um, but it also kind of gives a sense, when I spoke earlier about Amazon and that immediate gratification piece, it just kind of tells you how the consumer mentality is changing and how for us in senior living, uh, how we can look at modifying our strategy in order to align more, uh, more better, <laughs> to align better. It's Friday, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> um, but how do you align better with what people's uh, mindsets are? So that's 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 really the the genesis of of why I like that slide. 
Yeah, well, it's interesting, too, is that because you can overlay senior living on this, you have Google, which is where most consumers go to when they start their search. I mean, there are we do have a slide at the end that we could share if people are interested in which, I mean, Google just far takes, it, it is just so much further in the lead than any other search engine. But at the end of the day, the online marketplaces other than Amazon could be your caring.coms or your place for mom. And then, of course, you have your website and then you have social media. So it does really align, you know, except for the Amazon piece, pretty well with senior living as well. Interesting. This one I thought was really interesting, Kim. This is this goes whole the whole thing to this whole research per, uh, portion of consumers. So feel free to share some information on, on what your thinking was on this one as well. Yeah, you know, when I did that SMASH presentation, it was really targeted to post-acute providers. And there's just not tremendous research out there for, for that space. But I found this slide and I was excited because it talked about some nursing homes because it really speaks to the fact that um, people are doing their due diligence before they even walk in the door. Um and that like really using the nursing homes as an example, historically we're used to the discharge planner sends the referral, your admissions person looks at it, maybe works with your director of nursing or makes an immediate bed offer. They accept the bed offer or not. Um, but that's always been traditionally how people have viewed that, that relationship. But what this slide, is expressing is that even a post-acute provider needs to not lose sight over the kind of information that they are putting um, out there because people, even if they're sitting in mom's hospital room and they've just been told they got to go to a nursing home, they still have the power to do some searches and look some things up. Um, but I, I thought it was amazing that chiropractors were was low. I think hospitals are low. I was kind of surprised about that. Physical therapist, 84%. I suspect that's probably more on an outpatient basis um, for physical therapy. It's interesting, and, interesting data. Mm -hmm. We had um we fin we did a pilot with Marquee Health last year with 10 skilled nursing um communities, and we utilized a tool on their website to help their people that were looking for short-term rehab or long-term care get into their admissions faster. Um, and the customer was really surprised at how many people, even if you do get a referral and they hand you three options, they're still going to go to your website and search and do their homework. Um, so what we did is figure out, well, they're at the bottom of the sales funnel and they need to make a decision. Let's help them. So we do have some data backing this up that, um, in fact, there are a lot of leads that come through a post-acute care website if you give them an opportunity to convert in. So yeah. I'll share that with you. I don't know if we've ever shared you with that. You, I would love you to see it and just see the data that we captured uh, during that pilot. So, which brings us, I mean, you, you just laid this out, right? Um, <laughs> at the end of the day, we, particularly since the pandemic um, and since the, I would say, boom um, and senior living adopting more of a digital presence or a digital front door uh, for their customers due to the pandemic. And this evolution, I think we've probably jumped 10 years in senior living um, in focusing on having a better better digital presence and a, and a better way for consumers to engage with our brands. But if you look at the tradi traditional buyer's journey on the top, it used to be that sales had so much more engagement and influence in the buyer's journey. But now marketing and that research that those consumers are doing, they're coming in later after they've spent time on your website, they've read your content, they've been on other people's websites, they've been on shared websites. Um, and then the sales portion is shorter. But for me, I think it's even more impactful because this is really where your differentiation needs to be. Kim, I would I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on this uh, from the perspective of marketing and sales, definitely for a life plan community. It's interesting. It, it really is. And um, I'm amazed at how much old school marketing that 
we uh, still do in addition to the digital side. And it really does speak to kind of how that, that buyer's journey has changed and just kind of where people are at. That silent searcher needs some nurturing. They need some good information that's going to be able to uh, bring them uh, full circle to, to the sales piece. And I really think that the other side of that, when you think of just somebody's psyche, um, it is overwhelming, you know, if you're trying to find a place, you know, maybe not so much for a life plan community, but but as one of the audience members mentioned, you know, there's a there's a cost perspective. It, it may very well be the last major decision that somebody makes. And then we're asking them to downsize and potentially take all those memories and forget about them, which is not what our intent is. Um, but they, they, they're they spending a lot of time. You know, when I think about those 22 to 28 touch points, um, I'm, I'm, I would wager a bet that 60% is spent in the marketing side and maybe 40% on the sales side. So we've got an educated consumer. Um, so whether or not that education is because they're fearful, they're afraid of feeling not smart about what it is, the, the topic, because how would they know unless they worked in our space, um, that how does a salesperson really um, embrace that um, and not feel intimidated, frankly? Um, we have uh, right now someone who's coming into tour next week in one of our communities, and they sent a four page document of questions. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and I can't wait because I know there's a tool that's just being waiting to be built for future people. Um, but this is what happens, you know, and and just as an editorial, too, I think our industry has done a really great job of um, making everything vanilla, like it's senior living. But what does senior living really mean? So, you know, how these searches are happening, you know, it's really going to be critical for us to help define what each of those pieces is within that senior living continuum. Because how many times do we get a call and they're really assisted living, they're not life plan, you know, and they just don't necessarily understand what that means. And so that's where the marketing piece is really critical. Um and I'm blessed because I have a, a guy that just writes tremendously. And it's just really going to be important to write blogs, not just like top five reasons to be at a life plan community, but really talking about some practical things that they are thinking about. So we like to do a lot of social listening um, on uh, across the internet to see what kind of things people are asking. I talk a lot with my salespeople to find out what they're getting asked, what are their, you know, what was their top crappiest tour and why was that? Because I think we can pull some things and extract some topics for yeah. relevant blogging. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit more about social listening? I, I've, that's not a term. Um, I've heard you say it before, but it's not a term that I've done. How, how would somebody on this call go about doing some social listening? Sure. So um, it takes, uh, it's, 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 it's very easy. Um, what I've done is I did a search um, questions about um, senior, well, senior living, you know, yeah. questions about uh, nursing homes. And I'm trying to look because I always here it is age. What one site that came up was called Aging Care, and basically, Aging Care is a is a forum where people can post questions. Mm -hmm. And as a professional, you are able to answer them if you so choose, or you know not. And I get a weekly email. Well, it's probably not weekly. I get almost a daily email of this list of stuff that people have talked about. And so what I do is I kind of peruse that and look at that and um, try and assess if there are some topics that we can write about in blogs or um, 
in even our internal newsletter that we have to kind of help our staff have a better grasp about what these consumers are uh, talking about. So um, that's it just- also one. helps your SEO too, right? The more information you have and the blogs you have on your website, the better your SEO is as well. True. And the other sure. piece to consider is that the way Google is changing these days with um, voice search, that it's not just one or two words or a phrase. Now it's like a complete paragraph of yeah. what they're trying to look for. Yeah, it's it's going to be even more important for that reason. I, I wonder how, um, you know, we, we use um, ChatGTP a lot internally um, just to better figure out how to describe what we do in our product and be more concise so people really just understand it because we do a lot. Um, but I wonder too, is if you asked ChatGTP, you know, what are the top 50 questions that senior people looking for senior living or life plan communities? I'd be very curious to see what came out of that. So very interesting. Well, you know, with AI and such, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, we're doing a lot of testing internally of how we can do that to make our jobs easier. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to do that after the call today. <laughs> it just came to me because I do it. We, we call, we call it James it has a name. Uh, so, <laughs> so we can, so we can make it more personalized. <laughs> awesome. Okay. That was, that was great. Uh, and then, um, we want to talk to a little bit about this too. I mean, these folks are going right and there, there's certain criteria that they're looking for in their buyer's journey. So let's go ahead and talk about this a little bit too. Sure. So you can see that tours uh, by far is the number one um, uh, item that people use to make their, their choices and their decisions. But, you know, there's a whole lot of other um, sources that somebody will use. Um, I have seen a, a, uh, not a tool, but I've seen some data where it said um, people believe in online reviews. It's probably like this crazy number, like 86 to 95% of the time, even if they don't know them. So yeah. we've got that piece, but then, you know, certainly they rely on friends and family. And frankly, I was on a webinar myself. And when we talk about emotional intelligence, they actually spoke to the fact that um, people may have this sense of what will my friends and family think if I move to a life plan community? So mm -hmm. I thought that was very interesting and I, I haven't fleshed that out yet, but I think that I keep thinking about that, you know, that either it's fear of missing out or fear of something. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see there that the online stuff is by far uh, the 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 largest mix of resources that people are using to do their research, um, and then the in the blue is more close to home, right? The ability to touch, feel, see, or have somebody help you much more closer to them. Interesting. Yeah. This came from U.S. News. Uh, this was recent. This was just I think last month. I think that this came out. Mm -hmm. It did. And then trusted resources. So the consumers. Um, this is also really interesting too. Mm -hmm. I think we can never lose uh, sight of that personalized touch, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also important to realize that that digital piece is what drives, is what's driving the bus to get them to the door. Yeah. And this is interesting too on the community websites, not at all confident, neutral, Mm -hmm. very confident. So it says, it, it just shows that people are not super confident by going to a community's website. You um, know, one of the mm -hmm. things we haven't done very much on community websites is do our own research, write some white papers. Mm -hmm. you know, we're used to going to certain sites um, for, um, I'm trying to think of the, the hot, like the hospital that, that does a nice job of this and it's escaping me, but, you know, there are some go-to like WebMD, you know, yeah. go to WebMD um, and they trust it because probably because MD is in the name. I mean, it's good information, yeah. <laughs> but, gotcha. um, but I, you know, they could very well think that our websites are fluff and that's where my 
sense is that's where the blogging and the real guts of um, really giving a day in the life of what happens in a life plan community, um, you know, that it's a vibrant area for folks to, um, you know, it's a place for living. It's not a, you know, a right. place for other things. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Kim, Lucy is asking if the senior living advisor means the individual or a site, if you know that from that, this pre this slide right here. So the second one from the bottom says senior living advisor. Do you know if that's an individual like senior living locators, assisted living locators, or if it's um, an actual site? I honestly don't know that answer. I'm I'm sorry, but I will we'll make a note of that. <laughs> we'll figure it out, Lucy. We'll see if we can get you an answer. No, it's interesting. I mean, at the end of the day, it could be either or, right? Because that the consumer was looking to either that salesperson or that local market advisor to be an expert for them. Um, and it looks like based on these numbers at 23% of people that use a senior living advisor of some sort find it, they, it makes them feel very confident. And then th that whole yellow area makes me feel really uncomfortable because it, it says there's a tremendous opportunity to improve here. If they're neutral, right? If they're not really, really confident about it, the tour makes sense because you can touch it, feel it, taste it, right? You could come in for lunch or you're in there. So it makes sense that 30% of people would find that the tour would be the most trustworthy. You would think that it would even be higher, um, but there's a lot of neutral in there. So I, that just tells me that there's a lot of room to improve upon, like you say, great content. Um, any way that you can... I always say when I do sales training with um, sales and marketing professionals in senior living, and I always ask the question, what is your job? And I think we all want to go to, uh, you know, bringing someone through the sales process or getting new residents. But at the end of the day, your job is really to help somebody see themselves living there based on whatever that value is, right? Because if they can see themselves living there and they can afford it, they'll, they'll move in. Um, but really interesting, interesting data, mm -hmm. very interesting data. And then this this is about when consumers, how they're the information that they need shifts over time mm -hmm. uh, in different phases. So do you see this also in your communities, Kim? We do. And, uh, you know, I, I think about that whole search engine piece, you know, and you've got that organic content, which is the stuff that we're creating yeah. based upon various things. And then of course there's, you know, your, your digital ads and, and such. And um, sorry, I just got, there you go. And, you know, you can spend a ton of money and we do spend money on uh, Google ads, both display and search. Um, but, you know, never lose sight of that whole organic piece because it's free. And then when they get on your website, if you get them to do a call to action and they give you information, now that's first party uh, information, you can keep that and start pushing them through the funnel. So those 12, uh, 22 to 28 touches, now you haven't had to buy a list for that. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there's there's a lot of rich opportunity there, but, um, you know, it's that silent searcher that, that yeah. is really driving the bus on that. Yeah, and it's interesting to see the the tour. Of course, after you you've engaged with the community and you're in the in the midst of evaluation, it would make so sense that the in person tour would be the top. Mm -hmm. But look at the senior living advisor at the evaluation point. It actually moves to the end. So mm -hmm. my gut is is that this is literally like a local market advisor. Yeah, um, that's what I'm once thinking. they've made the introduction, they go to the end. It's interesting, very interesting. And look at how the realtors in there as well. Yeah. And you know, I will tell you for my uh, 55 plus community, I'm getting a lot of realtors calling and it's because they're, they're trying to help their, their folks with that transition. Find somewhere to live. Yeah. Especially in this market, right? Sell our real estate now it's high priced. Um, but where do I go after, right? I need to find somewhere to live <laughs> if you sell your home. So interesting. And, 
And, you know, the other thing I just want to mention on the senior living advisor, because uh, somebody mentioned that their sales reps are called senior living advisors. And I've seen that before, too. Yeah. But think about how that relationship flips. Like if you're talking with a place for mom, you talk with the advisor, they give you a couple options. Maybe they set up some tours for you. Then they do that warm handoff, hopefully, to the three communities. Yeah. Well, then the need for that senior advisor goes down. Yeah. Goes down. Makes sense. Rounds out the picture. It's interesting. I that one thing I love to do is look at this data and then just sit back and analyze it and say, okay, well, why is that? And you know, we do that with our with our stuff is when we meet with customers, like, okay, well, why did that go down last month? Maybe we should change it. Maybe if we change the wording, it'll engage more, you know, looking at the data. So, um, all right, here. And this one was also part of this survey they did. I'm, I, I'm, when I send out the recap email on this, I'm going to look up mm -hmm. this survey that U.S. News did on senior living and find out what the, the um, what's the word I'm looking for, what the sample was. And yeah. I'll, I'll also uh, see if I can find a link to it so I can share it with everybody, post this as well, because there's some really good stuff in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it really does drive, uh, the slide drives to what some folks have already talked about yeah. um, related to that value on the independent living side. Um, and it really speaks also to the want versus need-based sale, you know, that need-based sale in the area of, of memory care might be, I'm really concerned about care and if there's enough staff to take care of mom. But on the independent living side, it's like, how do I convince you to write me a check for, you know, three hundred thousand uh, dollars for the lifestyle that we're we're providing you in exchange for that? You know, what value do they see uh, for that? And then the management piece, I think, is really key, um, particularly for life plan communities, because um, North Carolina is regulated by the Department of Insurance for the CCRC world, but not every state does that. So, you know, there's, there's, uh, I'm not going to speak, I can't speak very much about other states, but just, you know, people would be thinking if something's not regulated, am I going to be gypped? <laughs> Or not. All right. Well, what this in looking at this slide, um, and one of the reasons why we put this together was is that life plan communities are challenging in the sense that the value and I'm going to call it the product, the product that you deliver to the consumers is complex. But this slide drives it forward for me even more. You add a skilled nursing section on it, right? <laughs> to this as well, but you have IL, AL, memory care, it's all offered in one. And if each one of these individuals uh, or as a consumer goes through the needs for each one of these things, the value changes for them. So th that telling that story um, to someone who's looking at a life plan community has to kind of encompass a lot of this because part of the value is, is you move into one once, right? And then you live in this community and it supports you as you go through the aging process. So can you talk to that a little bit, Kim? Like. How do you advise your sales and your sales teams to be able to talk about this? Because I imagine some communities, and I might be going too far, but some communities may take some assisted living in or maybe take memory care from the outside. But in general, those services are saved for the people that live in those communities, correct? Um, it depends. So okay. for our communities, um, we do take folks from the outside, okay. um, but that is the best kept secret um, that, that not a lot of folks from the external area realize that. So they're often surprised when we mention it. We do have some sheltered beds. That's what we call them for our, um, our independent living residents. So um, oh, interesting. Yeah. So, and, and my sense from when I was in the for-profit world, um, a lot of the CCRCs were starting to open up their beds. And mm -hmm. I think that it was a product of what we've all frankly been experiencing over the past several years, uh, thinking back to skilled nursing, where people were going home with home health more. So, um, 
you know, people were, were looking for business. And one way that they could get that business is to be able to take that business, take folks from the outside. Then I think about the salesperson and I go, whoa. So the salesperson is selling. Um, it has to be need-based sale because the offering is so complex. I mean, at the end of the day, that is a lot for a salesperson to to focus on. Actually. And, you know, and, you know, um, one of some things that, that we instill in our sales team is to uh, be collaborative. So we're not selling in silos where independent living has blinders on. Right. Oh, I can't talk to you about this. Right. Um, so it's really just connecting uh, the dots or maybe handing off that tour. Um, or sometimes it's really just bringing in our home care director or our director of nursing to kind of talk about, you know, how that piece might, might work. Um, on occasion, we'll get somebody who it's a split couple where somebody's going to go to independent living, but they're wanting to put somebody on memory care. Yeah. So it becomes a little more of a direct conversation. Um, and then you have folks that they're like, we don't want to see anything related to health care. Cause that's never going to happen to us. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so then we're kind of staying in the independent living side, but I think the biggest piece of what we're doing is really asking those basic, simple questions to find out what's going on in their brain, what's interesting to them, and then being able to target those areas. And tell um, the story, tell the value story based on what's important to them. Yeah. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that we don't tell them the other stuff. We have other tools that defines that. Like we have to give them our disclosure statements and that sure. truly describes the whole farm. Um, but we just keep it very simple because think about it, you know, particularly if they've been touring a ton of locations, they're on overload, you know, yeah. what did I see where? And, um, you know, people start to lose some of that information you've given them even in, in tours. And so that's where it's even more vital to kind of keep that drip campaign going so that um, they can have that recall uh, yeah. after the tour. Makes sense. I mean, whenever I think about this sale too, I've been ma I've been mainly in technology sales, more B2B sales, B2B uh, sales my entire career. And a B2B sale tends to be uh, committee driven. There's multiple people making a decision. Um, it is a thoughtful decision. Uh, it takes times. It's a complex decision. There's lots of different levels that are impacted by it, whether it be operations, sales, um, the C-level suite, whatever it might be. And sometimes senior, this life plan community or CCRC sale feels like that, right? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a bigger decision. It doesn't feel B2C, business to consumer. It feels B to B <laughs> more because these sales folks need to be more trained to be more consultative selling, which is really interesting to me. So. Yeah. Yeah. If I can just take a step back for a second. Vince was nice enough to put the link in chat to oh, the news and yeah. 754 US adults who had moved into a senior living community within the year prior are the ones wow. that were surveyed. Oh, interesting. So not a not a huge Sample. Not a huge sample, but they are customers. But they are customers, exactly. They had moved in. So interesting. very interesting. Thank you, Peggy. And thank so you. That link is in the chat for anyone. And um, we can include that in the email afterwards as well. Beautiful. That's awesome. So I love this. Sorry. No, sorry. That's my fault. Go ahead. <laughs> um I, I like to include this slide and I'm, I'm excited that there are some operations people on, on the call and some marketing people turned operations because um, it really does kind of show that trajectory of emphasis in the area of digital marketing. And it's just like anything, you can spend a ton on digital marketing um, and get a whole lot of beautiful information, but it's all about getting the right people. And um, that's what really helps with, um, sorry, I had, a, I had a meeting thing pop up. We heard it. I'm sorry. That's okay. We can start um, to wrap things up. I think we're going. Let's see. Okay, okay. Uh, 
but I think that the, the emphasis is that you can spend as much as you want. You can spend as little, yeah. um, but you can't set it and leave it. Like you have to be committed to looking at your presence in the digital spectrum in order to make that impact. Yeah. And then you mentioned too, when we first met uh, yesterday, or actually when we met last week to talk about what the things we wanted to cover on this, you had said that um, that you're leaning more into traditional advertising as well. Can you talk a little bit about this for everyone? Because after all, for a life plan community or CCRCs, I know you have a variety, maybe you could focus more on the life plan, but you said you were leaning into more traditional advertising. Can you share what type of traditional advertising that you're leaning into? Uh, yes. Um, you know, my brain is mostly in the in the world of, of digital, but what we yeah. have started to find is that we're doing uh, a lot of direct mail in order to generate foot traffic for monthly events on all of our campuses. Um, I've always felt like direct mail was spray and pray. Mm -hmm. uh, and to a certain degree it is, but with the technology and um, the, the big data availability, um, what it's allowed us to do is to buy a better list that is age and income qualified so that now we don't have to spend a lot of time in qualifying them. If they show up, we know they're going to be qualified and we can work them through the funnel that way. More um, targeted. Interesting. Yeah. And we've done, um, you know, from traditional marketing, direct mails one, but we've done... Um, I spend a ton of money on uh, paper advertising in a magazine uh, in North Carolina called Our State. And um, it has been a game changer. And it frankly blew my mind because, you know, I, I like the magazine and, you know, I'm a newspaper reader too, like a true hard copy newspaper magazine uh, reader. And, um, that generated some some crazy results really for our 55 plus uh, lifestyle community that we're opening up. Um, in probably the last 90 days, I've had 300 VIPs sign up wow. with interest. And the difference is their demographic is my demographic. Yeah. So that is, but, but marrying all of those things in our marketing arsenal, um, go old school, but make sure you remember the digital piece because people are, the internet's not going away, <laughs> you know? Um, so tr that is not going to go away. So you have to kind of infuse these other old school kind of pieces. Uh, into I, think, I think that advice is really, really great. It's really about understanding who your customer is and then trying to figure out a way where the new modern world of all digital, that digital front door that people like to talk about versus yes. how do you get eyeballs, right? How do you get in touch in front of people? And if they are, if they read that magazine and they may even have an online digital version of that magazine, but at the end of the day, that magazine is hitting the right eyeballs. Yeah. Right? And that's, and that's exactly key because they also do some email blasts and that was another uh, whole game changer as well. And the key there was that we had a landing page that we could capture those folks. So yeah. there's the digital piece. There you go. Very interesting. Um, I don't know. We're kind of up against the hour. Um, I don't know if there's, if you want to just quickly drop into this digital discoverability or we could send this out afterwards. It's just basically talks about your discoverability and your SEO. Yeah, I would just, we can send it out. Send it. Okay, no problem. And just so you guys know, um, uh, Kim uses our Navigator product on her website. Uh, she calls it Count Sierge Mary, which I think is really sweet. Um, but it basically just helps people find what they need. And I think um, one of the things that Kim's a believer in, and this is actually a slide pulled from her Smash conference, is that you need to find ways to engage your visitors to help them convert in quickly. A lot of this is about lead generation. But as you've seen in this presentation, people come from a lot of different places. They're in different parts of their journey. Um, they may they may be far more educated or they may just be looking for education. So being able to offer them ways to engage them wherever they are, they happen to use one of our surveys as well, which captures a whole bunch of data to help empower the salesperson to be more aware of where the person is. But at the end of the day, you know, it's really about creating um, education, content, 
um, and the ability to give your consumers a way to convert into your sales funnel that's comfortable with them, whether it's through traditional media or digital media. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I think that's where we're at. And Kim, I don't know if you want to just add anything or just go for Q&A. It's up to you. Um, I think we can go for, for Q&A for, to be a uh, great right. full of time. Anybody have any questions at all? Um, there was, we probably went a little over, but there was a lot of really good data in here. So please feel free to ask questions in chat or unmute yourself and ask questions. This is a great time to pick someone's very experienced brain. <laughs> So this is Missy. I have a question. Um, I'm curious if you can share percentage wise what you're spending in your budget can from uh, digital, print, direct mail, et cetera, how you how you slice and dice it. Because we're getting into budget season here and I want to add Waypoint and some other products that I've seen to our digital toolbox. Sure. So let me think about this for a minute because we're in the throes of our budget budget process too and i've just kind of like put this put this uh on paper um so and i'm trying to think could you repeat the question i had a hard time hearing it i would love to hear sure my question my question was um how is kim dividing her budget between digital direct marketing traditional marketing etc how does she slice and dice it because we're all faced with that same challenge and we know we have to be in we have to be in multiple media. Okay. So if I think of it just from like a percentage standpoint, I'm probably doing about 40% for digital and then about 30% direct, uh, well, that's direct mail. Um, and then I'm probably doing the rest in, well, let's see. Yeah, it's it's 40 for direct, 30 for um, direct mail, and then probably about 25% for um, like paper uh, print. Thank you. Interesting. So more on the traditional side than on the digital side. Yeah. But it depends on the community, I would imagine, Kim, too, right? On um, the services and what you offer. Are you talking more about the life plan communities right now? Yes. Yeah. And what I would say is that this has changed because three years ago, I would have told you that my budget was more maybe like 60% on digital. digital. Interesting. And the, you know, COVID really drove that bus uh, in relation to that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, now without it, it's, um, um, it's, it's turned more into some direct mail kind of things. Interesting. Very interesting. Any other questions or Lucy, did that answer your question? We hope that was good. Yeah. Great. Awesome. All right. Any other questions? We're happy to stay around for a couple of minutes, but uh, we'll send out a recording of this. I hope you guys found the information useful. We're going to take August off this because uh, everybody's on vacation and we'll be coming back in September with the return of Coffee with Waypoint. But we'll send out a recording after this and we'll sit on and see if you have any additional questions. Um, but I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and thanks again for joining.